The hydrophile lipophile balance scale, or HLB, is used to categorize surfactants, especially emulsifiers. And the idea is that if you have a high number, so high HLB is equal to very hydrophilic, and a low number is going to be very hydrophobic. And of course, the balance between which part of the molecule, how big the hydrophobic is versus how big the hydrophilic is, is going to determine the, uh, the shape of the molecule and which type of emulsion it can stabilize. And of course, for hydrophobic, we could also try to be a little more positive here and call it lipophilic. Okay. All right, the, if, since we're talking about emulsions, let's talk about the ideal numbers that we want to use for an emulsion. If we have an emulsifier with an HLB equal to 3 to 6, then that is going to be ideal for water and oil emulsions. And if we're more in a higher range, 8 to 13, that's going to be for oil and water emulsions. And so if remember the curvature for a water and oil emulsion looks something like this. So here's our water and here's our oil. And so we wanted to have something with um, a smaller portion of the molecule in the water in the droplet and a bigger portion of the molecule outside. And so you can see if you have something that has, uh, remember a low HLB number corresponds to something that's mainly hydrophobic. So the bigger part of the molecule is out here in the oil. That makes sense. If we had a droplet that was uh, an oil and water emulsion, then you want to have the bigger part of the molecule on the outside. So you might have a, an emulsifier that looks something like this. And you can see the bigger part of the molecule is the hydrophilic part. So that means that we expect it to have a high LHOB number. So notice high goes with oil and water, and low goes with water and oil. So it kind of makes sense. OK, that's very fine. How do we figure out the HLB of an emulsifying agent? If you buy a commercial emulsifying agent, the HLB number will be published. What if you wanted to design one or sort of figure out if some molecule could be used as an emulsifying agent? And if so, would it stabilize oil and water or water and oil? Well, in this case, it's nice to have some way of estimating HLB for a new compound. So let's look at that next. We can estimate HLB using this simple formula. The HLB is going to be equal to 7 plus a number called HLB hydrophile. And this is just a number that's going to characterize the hydrophilic part of the molecule, minus HLB for the lipophile. So we're going to have numbers that characterize how big this portion is, how big this portion is, and that's going to give us our HLB. So let's look at some of those numbers. Basically, we're going to chop our molecule into a bunch of pieces and then use those pieces to, uh, to come up with our number. So let's look at some, some numbers. First, let's look at some, some hydrophiles. You can imagine a hydroxyl substituent would definitely be hydrophilic. We can also have an ethylene oxide polymer or a ligamer, and each of those units is going to be hydrophilic. And the numbers we would use for those for a hydroxyl it is 1.9. And for an ethylene oxide unit, it's 0.36. I guess I'll throw one more on there. If we had a free carboxyl group, let's 
it's a pretty high HLB of 2.1, so quite hydrophilic. For the lipophile groups, for the lipophile groups, the most common things would be just a carbon atom and a chain. So we could have something like a methyl group or perhaps CH2 group, and it doesn't really matter. All of these are just given a common value of 0.47. Another common group you might see is a propylene glycol unit. And that extra carbon turns this from being a hydrophilic group into a lipophilic group with a value of 0.11. So you can imagine making a, maybe a block copolymer or a block oligomer where you had some uh, propylene glycol or polypropylene glycol and, and polyethylene glycol. And depending upon the balance, you could have a, a section that was lipophilic and a section that was hydrophilic. Okay, so those are going to be our, our groups. Now let's do an example. Let's estimate HLB for this surfactant. So we've got a 10 carbon chain. So this is an abbreviation just means we've got an alkyl chain and a certain number of ethylene oxide units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 carbon atoms in our hydrophobe. And then we have a certain number of ethylene oxide units terminating in a free hydroxyl group. And we've got 12 of those. So we can see we have a lipophile and a hydrophile. So let's add up the numbers for those. So we have, first of all, for our HLB lipophile, we have 10 carbon atoms, each one contributing 0.47. And then we have to do our HLB for our hydrophile. And so we have 12 of these ethylene oxide units. If we go back to our table, we see each ethylene oxide was going to be, or uh, uh, each residue of uh, ethylene oxide is going to be 0.36. But we also have this free hydroxyl over here. And looking back at the table, we see that it's going to be 1.9. So the overall HLB for our molecule is going to be 7, this is the base value, plus our HLB hydrophile, which is 6.2, minus the HLB lipophile. And we end up with a, a value of 8.5. And we expect that 8.5 is going to be something that will stabilize an oil and water emulsion.